guys, and welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's Comic Corner. I'm your host as always, Cammy. This episode of Cammy's Comic Corner has been brought to you by The Squeege, created by David Leto. Issues 1 and 2 are available now at IndiePlanet.com and Kablam.com. And while you're there at those sites, you can pre-order issues 3 and 4 and then have a whole nice collection delivered to you as soon as possible. I have uh, reviewed issues 1 and 2 in the Kami's Comic Corner Indie Comics episodes volumes 1 and 4, so be sure to check out those episodes at the site and see why you should be falling in love with this this funny character with a magical squeegee. And I, and I, I shit you not, it's an enjoyable comic and a fun time had by all. So, kablam.com and indieplanet.com, pick up your issues of The Squeege today. Now on to the episode. I have quite the pick of the week, so let's get right into it. From Vertigo, we have Scalped number 49, written by Jason Aaron and art by R.M. Guerra. Now in this issue, it's kind of the conclusion of this arc that's been going on, it feels like, for, for a very long time, but it all gets nice and wrapped up. We have Catcher leading Dash to go find the man who killed his mother. And in the car, he's explaining maybe the motives of why he killed his mother. But what Dash doesn't know, but we, the audience, do, is that Catcher is the one who killed his mom. And Catcher's kind of sad that Dash didn't listen to him when he gave him that second chance, and he didn't better himself in any way. So Catcher feels like he needs to do what the gods have been telling him to do and, and bust a cap in Dash's ass. And so he's about to pull the trigger. He has the gun to his head and everything when Dash has to swerve out of the road real quick because Officer falls down, a blindfolded Officer falls down, who's been stabbed in the gut, mind you, by Catcher. He is walking through the street, and he almost gets hit by Dash. But, you know, that was kind of like the final harumph as he falls down. And Dash gets shot right through the cheek. It is fucking just brutal. He gets, he gets both cheeks pierced by a bullet. And then a gun battle ensues because Catcher's hurt, Dash is hurt. They're all stumbling from the car, shooting off at each other. No one's hitting anything. But Catcher makes, a, uh, makes his getaway to his horse in waiting Festus, but Festus apparently thinks he's betrayed the spirits or the gods as well and leaves Catcher there to die. Meanwhile, we have um, uh, Chief Red Crow talking with Hassel about the whole elections and everything, and, and he's still waiting for that sign, and the sign comes when Hassel starts having a heart attack, and Red Crow is like pondering for a second, do I call 911, or do I let my future opponent in these upcoming elections just fall to his demise. He does, he, he betters himself, and it's the sign from God that he needs, and he calls uh, 911, and they're able to get him there just in time. But in the end, we have uh, Dashiell carrying Officer Falls Down back into town, getting a, a lift from Festus. So Festus is now going with Dash, and Catcher is taken into the ICU, right next, and placed right next to um, another bad horse of sorts. And so it's going to be an interesting conversation if those two ever wake up. But it was a fucking spectacular spectacular <coughs> issue. R.M. Guerra's art on this really, really killed it. Everything from the one just iconic scene of uh, Dashiell and Officer Falls Down on horseback to just the whole gunfight at night. It's just great stuff. If you haven't been reading Scalped, uh, you should be picking up the trades. And a huge issue is coming up next month. Issue 50. I can't wait. Now on to the Fast Five. First up from DC, we have Deathstroke and the Curse of the Ravager number one. Now, in this issue, we see a little thing, a uh, little bit of what happens with Deathstroke upon the high seas, right before he was visited by Aquaman in uh, issue number two of Flashpoint. We see him hunting down Warlord and having big old fights on the high seas with Warlord, and because he's looking for some precious cargo, the cargo he's looking for is his daughter Rose, and he can't seem to find her uh, when they raid his ship. Warlord ship, and they find somebody else in a container, but it's not the droid he's looking for, as it were. So he tracks down the prison that she was just transferred to, um, and then the guys there tell her, oh, she's, he's in Norway. And so while he's at this prison, he recruits and gets people like Clayface and a couple other familiar faces to go find, you know, uh, not only Warlord, but his daughter again. But at the end, he's visited by Aquaman, and Aquaman doesn't like him patrolling his seas, and then we see a nice little trident going through Deathstroke's belly. But in this in this world, I can totally see Deathstroke as a pirate because he's got the skills, he's got the know-how, he's deadly on the high seas, and then, you know, have a, fo a foe like Warlord even sweetens the deal. It was a very good uh, tie-in, and if you're looking for the Flashpoint uh, miniseries to, uh, you know, skip or, or, or uh, lock onto, this is definitely one you want to lock onto. 
Next up from Marvel, we have Journey into Mystery, number 624. Now, we have young Loki uh, scheming again, and that's not, not a good thing when he schemes, but it's not, like, terrifying yet, but it takes place right after Fear Itself, number 3, or whatever the most recent issue was, and um, he's told to go to the stables and stay there, but he can't help himself. He gets on his hellhound, he goes to hell, and he, he, uh, he looks at Hela's hell and then Mephisto's hell, and he decides uh, that he needs to help out Asgard in a way because the serpent's tongue has come to Hela and wants to have a, a, a like an alliance with her. So then the serpent gets a nice little beachfront property in Hell, but Mephisto is not really a fan of this, and so. Once again, it's Loki at his best, playing two sides against themselves, while he profits in the end. Uh, his hellhound was going up against the guard of hell, this one dog, and the dog was telling him, like, um, you know, you don't need to sick your, your goon on me, right? I mean, I only protect the dead from coming in and out. You're, you're alive. You can come and go as you please. But, um... It's really interesting to see what's going to happen next because Mephisto is happy that Loki's back because he always needs somebody to, you know, banter with and, you know, uh, over-scheme, like out-scheme the schemer. And it's all about the devil you know in this issue. And, uh, you know, we don't want any alliances with any of the rulers of hell with the serpent, uh, but, you know, they don't know that. They, they don't know that they're being played. It's Loki, the grand chess master, only he's kind of like the Bobby Fischer age. Next up from Vertigo, we have American Vampire Survival of the Fittest, number one. Now, we have new characters. We have some uh, old characters in this. This is kind of the spinoff from the main series. It follows a gal named Felicia Book, and she is a part of the Vassals. And what the Vassals are are vampire hunters. They catalog vampires. They uh, prevent future attacks or hideous schemes from happening. And in this issue, she's trying to warn this uh, newspaper owner that uh, like a lot of people on his staff and the different uh, papers across the country are actually vampires and they're keeping certain news from making headlines or they're um, omitting a lot of different facts whatever helps the vampires cause and she takes care of one in his office right in front of him showing how much of a badass she is and we find out that she's kind of a little bit of a hybrid herself her dad was actually killed by skinner sweet and this, her mom was it's her, was her duty to find and try to kill skinner but she never succeeded but he uh, infect uh, skinner infected her dad and then the dad kind of gave her that hybrid gene almost, where she's not fully vampire, but she is kind of a blade. It's kind of like in this series, Blade meets BPRD, where you have this cool underground organization hunting for certain things, and their next target is this one professor with photos, uh, he's a, uh, no, no, a botanist, but his photosynthesis that he was doing studying could help become uh, the uh, little, the foundation for finding the ultimate vampire cure. So it's very interesting. We get to see uh, Cash McCougan again, from Vegas, and then um, just the art by Sean Murphy is just astounding. I mean, you look at this cover. I unfortunately made the mistake of saying that that was a Skinner Sweet and uh, his girlfriend, uh, Pearl, on the cover because I didn't read the issue yet. But it turns out, no, no, no. That badass pose right there, that's Cash, that's Felicia. It's going to be a fun miniseries, and just already I've been blown away. Good, good stuff. Next up from Marvel, we have Punisher Max number 14. Now, Nick Fury visits Frank in prison. And first I thought it was a hallucination or something, but no, no, it's Nick Fury. And he was kind of there to say, I told you so. You should have taken me up on that offer way back when, when he first got home from Nam. What is he talking about? He's talking about back when Frank was still in the meatpacking plant and, and he actually mangled that one dude's hand because he was harassing the women. Well, that one woman he was kind of protecting, she found, or she's turned up dead in the meat locker on a hook, which is pretty brutal. And Frank almost just flips out. He takes a knife. He, you think he's going to kill the boss, but no. He, he up and quits after implanting the uh, blade into some meat right by the boss to send a message. And then he works out as a busboy at this bar because he doesn't want to tell his wife that, oh, by the way, up and quit. And so while one night he's uh, being a busboy and everything, he prevents a hit from happening because a lot of the mafia and the mob would go to these certain bars. And the mob take interest in him. They go, okay, this guy ha has skills of some sort. And that's when Nick Fury first offers him something. We don't know what he's offering him, but it, it's, it seems pretty juicy if it's coming from Nick Fury. And now Frank has to deal with the mom on his ass because they're like, no, 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 how about you come take a ride with us? We want to recruit you whether you like it or not. While all this is going on, Big Jesus is starting his riot so he can get some face time with Frank. And something tells me Frank has recovered enough that if any attack uh, happens on him in prison now, he's going to be ready for it. I mean, you just, you know, flick of the wrist and you're dead. So it was a very good issue. Steve Dillon is just killing it on art. And then, you know, it's Jason Aaron again. Two titles this week. He's two for six in my reviews. That's a good percentage. I don't do math, though. 
And finally this week from DC, we have Flashpoint Citizen Cold number one. This is Scott Collins' brainchild, and usually while I'm not a fan of his overpainted style, like I, I love his more simpler stuff, like with his run on The Flash with uh, Jeff Johns, but nowadays it's like the over, it feels like it's sometimes going to be overpainted. But in this issue, it's kind of like at a, a balance. It's, it's kind of neutral, where you get the best of both worlds almost. But basically we follow um, Citizen Cold, who is the hero of Central City, and his, oh, his catchphrase that the uh, citizens have given him, Cold Snap! I don't know if DC was trying to make that uh, catch on, but until I get a free t-shirt in the mail saying Cold Snap, I'm not going to endorse it whatsoever. So we have, uh, in the opening uh, panels, him versus uh, Dr. Freeze. And, or, I'm sorry, Dr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze from, you know, Batman. But uh, we turn, uh, found out this hero isn't all that merciful like Batman would be. And he has no problem killing his villains in front of the public, in, you know, in the daytime, no less. But over at Iron Heights Penitentiary, he has his own sub-level where they keep all of his villains. And sure enough, it's the old rogue galleries. I mean, we have Mirror Master there, except he thought he killed Mirror Master, but now he's, plot he's plotting his downfall with Wizard and, and no one likes Trickster. And while all this is going on, uh, Citizen Cold has a little kind of a crush on Iris West, who is married to Wally West, who isn't Flash. But he, Wally West seems to be kind of like the Pied Piper in a way. I mean, I'm just seeing the musical notes that the Pied Piper is known for, but Pied Piper starts doing a little bit more research on who Citizen Cold may be. Turns out it's Leonard Snark, and he found out just that uh, his sister killed his dad because it was an abusive dad, ex-cop, now his sister's going to jail. But uh, th there's little bits of it from the old DCU that we know that, okay, well, you know, he has a sister, uh, Gold Glider or whatever Glider, and uh, left him at home with the abusive dad. But anyway, uh, bottom line, at the end of this issue, uh, Citizen Cold finds out that Wally was taking pictures of him and knows his identity now, so he, he deals with Wally. He kills Wally while Iris is on the other line. So, one flash down, a couple more to go. Why is this villain with a rap sheet a mile long protecting the city all of a sudden? We don't know. It intrigues me, though. Good stuff. So that does it this episode of Kami's Comic Corner. I was going to say, I've been your host, Kami. No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. If you want more Kami's Comic Corner goodness, check out www.kamiscomiccorner.com. Every Wednesday, you get a geeky talkie. Every Sunday, you get a weekly review episode. Every Friday, you get the best of my favorite covers. And at the beginning of the month, you have the book of the month. And at the end of the month, you have the top shelf selection. There's plenty of stuff happening at the website. And then if you want to see what random thoughts I have while on the toilet, check out at Cam Comic Corner on Twitter. Once again, this episode has been brought to you by The Squeege by uh, David Leto. Issues 1 and 2 are available now, and then 3 and 4 for pre-order, all at kablam.com or indieplanet.com. And if you want to see my reviews of issues 1 and 2, you can check out at the website kamiescomiccorner.com. You can check out Kami's Comic Corner Indie Comics Episodes Volumes 1 and 4. And so I'll give you the reasoning of why you should check out the superhero who has a, mag or a magical squeegee that apparently is magnetic, it can make him fly, and bubbles everywhere. It's a really fun comic, and I can't believe this isn't made into a movie yet. Hollywood, if you're listening, get on this right now! But until Hollywood uh, touches the property, you can pick up the copies of your own at kablam.com and at Indie Planet. So that does it this episode of Kami's Comic Corner! I have been your host, Cammie. Now I'm going to go see Super 8 because I heard nothing but fantastic things about it. And who knows, maybe I'll do a geeky talkie on it. Maybe. Maybe. Good night, everybody.